Hello everyone, welcome to Purpose in Parenting. My name is Jessica Israel and this is a podcast for those of us who have found or are finding our purpose in parenting. Just a quick disclaimer, this is real life for real parents. So if you hear a child in the background, you hear some noise, we will not be editing it out. And the purpose is to really relate, uh, to talk about the truth of what we go through and to really just have that conversation amongst ourselves with others who can relate. Uh, So it may not be perfect, uh, but guess what? Life with kids never is. (laughs) Now let's get into our new episode. So today... We are going to have a special bonus episode. This is going to be a little bit different than the other episodes that I've planned and have put out so far because we're going to talk about something that is a little controversial and really for the moment. So recently, the Supreme Court of the United States overturned Roe v. Wade. And what that did was cancel out essentially any federal protections for abortions in terms of making it a constitutional right and passing it down to the states for the states to decide how they want to rule and um, allow or not allow abortions in their own states. And in hearing all of this, uh, the conversation has changed a lot. And you know what, let me not even say that it's changed. It's just become more clear because it's always been framed as pro-choice versus pro-life. I've always felt like that was a big misnomer, that it wasn't accurate because as you listen closely, a lot of times when someone would say they're arguing for being pro-choice, they never considered life as an option. And obviously with pro-life, a lot of times there were people who were for a choice, um, but they weren't pro-abortion, if that makes sense. And now the conversation has really changed. It's no longer a pro-choice conversation, it's a pro-abortion conversation versus a pro-life conversation. And the idea of choice has really just been lost in the mix. You're seeing lots of signs saying, you know, I should be able to kill my baby and things like that. And it's very disturbing. I mean, even for someone who is pro-choice, it's very disturbing to see things like that. But it just makes clear that not everyone within the pro-choice movement had the same motives. You know, many were saying, hey, we just don't want government interference with a woman's body. You know, we don't want the government telling us what we can or can't do. And then for some others, it was just, well, you know, I want the ability to be able to kill my child. Sadly, that is the truth. That is the reality of it. Um, It's interesting because, you know, it's not even the conversation anymore of saying whether it is or isn't a living being. It's just, I want to be able to kill this living being if I choose and say, no, I don't want to give this living being up for adoption. I don't want to carry it and birth it and give it to someone else. I'd rather it just not survive. I don't want to give him to someone else. I just don't want him to exist if I can't have him. This is going to be a tough one. And I'm sure I'll probably lose some people along the way in having this discussion because it is a tough discussion. But it doesn't have to be. Because I feel like everyone's having multiple different conversations. I think one conversation is pro-abortion. One conversation is pro-life. And one conversation is pro-choice. And those are all different things. I think pro-choice is very different from being pro-abortion or pro-life because you can be pro-choice and still be one of the other. But unfortunately, like I said, it's become either pro-abortion or pro-life. The idea of a choice 
is really been lost in the mix. And you can see that from the conversations that have been happening online, on Twitter, et cetera, the signs that people have been making. One sign that literally said, I should be able to kill my baby. Another sign that said, well, God was able to kill his only son. Why can't I? I mean, this is what's really going on out there. But the purpose of this episode is not to talk about pro-abortion or pro-life or pro-choice, which are all different things. The purpose of this podcast episode is to give a voice to the person who has been forgotten in this conversation. As much as we talk about supporting mothers and loving mothers and women's health care, the voice that has been conveniently ignored in all of this is the voice of the mothers who want their children but are unable to have them or forced into a situation where they abort. Those mothers are not being given a voice and it's wrong. We can't say we care about women, but we don't care about all women. We only care about women when it fits the narrative we want, when it fits the agenda we want, when it fits the storyline we want. There are other women out there, lots of them, and their voices are not being heard. We can't say we care about women when black maternal and fetal health care is abysmal in this country, where black non-Hispanic women die at a rate 3.5 times higher than non-Hispanic white women in this country when they are pregnant and in labor. Black maternal and fetal health care in this country needs a lot of attention. We have mothers of color and their children that are dying. And no one's doing anything or saying anything about that in terms of women health care. That is a problem. No one is talking about the mother who wants her child, but is being told she's too poor to have a kid or she doesn't have a good enough job to have a child, or she won't be able to take care of the child, or it's irresponsible for her to have this child because of whatever the life circumstances may be, so she should just abort. No one's talking about that mother who is pressured into that or made to feel like she has to utilize that option, even though she doesn't want to. Where is her voice? Not every woman who chooses abortion wants to abort. And in fact, women who have second trimester abortions, they have to start the process, you know, one to two days beforehand because they have something, it's like seaweed sticks inserted in them that causes them to dilate. And then if they decide they want to change their mind, then they're faced with the, the pressure from the doctor where the doctor may say, well, of course, you can change your mind at any time, but your child may be born with birth defects, but something may happen. We can't guarantee you that your child will be OK. And now that woman is pressured. She feels like, oh, my gosh, well, I, I can't do this to this child now. Where is the voice for those women? Where is the voice for the women who want their children but are being pressured into abortion? who are being told that they don't have the resources or the ability to raise a child or being told that it would be irresponsible for them to raise a child. Who is talking and speaking up for those women? Why are we not talking about resources for mothers? Whether you are pro-abortion or pro-life, the reality is neither one is pro-women most of the time. Neither one is pro-families most of the time because you're not making it easy for a woman to have a family. A woman should be able to be a single mother and be able to survive and provide. She may not desire or plan on being a single mother, but that shouldn't be something that forces her to feel like she needs to terminate her pregnancy. Or... Two parents, a mother and a father, they shouldn't feel like, well, I have four kids already. We can't afford the fifth. Money should not be a reason that they have to terminate their pregnancy when they don't want to. 
We're not talking about women who willingly say, hey, I don't want this pregnancy. We're talking about those who do. The mothers and the fathers that do. And they're, they're forced into a situation where they feel like they can't. And that is the only option. That is wrong. We are doing something wrong in this country. Where are the resources for parents? The purpose of this podcast, that's why it's called Purpose in Parenting, is for those of us, like I said from the beginning, who have found our purpose in being a parent. Some people love being a parent. Some people want to be parents. And if they want to be, it should never be an economic reason or societal pressure that they can't be. You shouldn't have to wait. You would say, well, wait to the best time. Well, if a person ends up, you know, being pregnant with their partner or whatever the case may be at that time, and they say, wow, I really would love to have a child. But once that but happens, that's where we need to step in and say, okay, well, what resources do we need to give you to get rid of that but? Because clearly you want this child. Clearly, you're not dead set on saying, hey, I want to terminate this pregnancy. I, I, I want to abort this child. So what can we do to help you? Where are the resources for families? And then something very disturbing that I've been seeing online a lot. Um, I saw one disturbing post likening uh, a child to cancer cells. Uh, you know, likening a child to a parasite. And it's like, wait a second, how disrespectful are you being to parents and to pregnant women who want their child? You can make your point without being disgusting and disrespectful and dismissive. You can't say you care about women, but you're literally describing the most precious time in the lives of many women and men and describing it like that. That's not how you get your point across. That's not how you get your point across at all. You don't get your point across by degrading somebody else or degrading someone else's child. Where did we, how did we get to this point? How did we get here to where this type of behavior is okay, is supported, is just blasted all over the internet? And are we thinking about the effect that it's going to have on children who are growing up in this environment hearing these things when they're literally hearing children being referred to as a parasite, as a cancer, when we're hearing people shout that they want to kill their child, when we hear people shout that, you know, it's a child's life means nothing. You don't have to be pro-life to say, hey, maybe that's not a good idea this type of messaging. Maybe we ought to change the messaging a bit because children are hearing this and those children are going to be adults and they're going to be in this society. And then how are they going to raise their kids? You know, you talk about parents being involved with children, putting effort into raising their kids, fathers being involved. You know, people always talk about fathers. Well, you're out here saying that a child doesn't matter, that a child is a cancer. Well, how do you expect them to treat their children then when they have them? Or how do you expect these children to feel, like I said, when they grow up? And what kind of adults will they become? I mean, that's crazy. None of us would ever want someone to tell our child or to make our child feel like they're not wanted, but literally that's all you're hearing. When you're talking about a woman's right to choose, we're no longer talking about choice anymore. Now the conversation has just completely turned to why a woman shouldn't have a child, how bad it is to have a child, why the child's life doesn't matter, all of these things. You can very easily say a government should not interfere with a woman's body. You can very easily say that without demeaning and diminishing and disrespecting a woman and her children. It doesn't have to be one or the other. And lastly, the other thing that I've noticed in this, like I said, this is a bonus episode. It's not something that I had planned, but I felt like that there's the, this voice for mothers that's just not being heard. And 
we're always silenced and it's wrong. And for once, we need someone to really speak out for the moms out there, the moms that have been forgotten. And, and this last piece, especially when I said about women who, you know, don't want to have an abortion, but they're forced to, or they feel like they're forced to, um, because they're not given resources. We need to fix that. Then also online, I've seen the reference to women who have had a miscarriage or an ectopic pregnancy or other issues, and then likening the procedures they go to to an abortion. That is wrong. That is wrong. That is harmful. That is dangerous and disrespectful. A woman who has a miscarriage and needs a DNC or has to have her child removed from her body, she didn't want an abortion. She's not aborting her child. It is wrong to say that to that woman. To say, well, you just aborted your child. She did not abort her child as she miscarried. You know, the trauma that comes with a miscarriage. How hard it is for women that want these children. And then you're saying, because unfortunately their child didn't survive and they had to get a procedure to remove that child who didn't survive from their body, that that's an abortion. You're, it, it's crazy. I mean, where did we get to this point that we think it's okay or wise or compassionate to say that to a woman? Or a woman who has had an ectopic pregnancy saying, well, you aborted your child. She did not abort her child. She had a life-saving treatment, a life-saving surgery that unfortunately the doctors weren't able to save her child in doing this life-saving surgery. She did not have an abortion. She did not voluntarily get rid of her child or kill her child. It's not what happened. Don't you dare equate that to an abortion. That is not the same thing. If you decide to abort, that is your choice. But do not tell these women who want their children and due to circumstances out of their own control, they were unable to continue with the pregnancy. Do not tell them that they're aborting their child. There is no compassion in that. So again, my point of this episode is to speak up for the women who just aren't being heard right now. It's unfair to them. You're lumping them into something that they didn't ask to be lumped into. I know my voice is just one of many, but I hope that it stops. I hope that we learn to make our arguments and make our points without demeaning someone else, without showing lack of compassion for someone else, without inserting someone else into the argument who didn't ask to be inserted into it. Keep these women out of it if you're making your point to that. Do not lump them in. And also, fight for mothers. You say you're fighting for women's health care, but you're really not fighting for women's health care. If you're fighting for women's health care, you care about the maternal and fetal deaths of black women and women of color in this country and how it is sky high, the highest in any developed nation. That it is dangerous for a black woman to have her child in this country under a doctor's care. Under a doctor's care. If you're fighting for women's health, why are you not fighting for that? If you're fighting for women and women's health, why are you not fighting for women to have safe pregnancies? Why are you not fighting for women to have the resources to have a child so that if they do not want an abortion, that they don't feel pressured into it, that they don't feel like that's their only option? If you're gonna fight for women, truly, fight for women. Thank you so much for listening to our podcast today. I really appreciate the support. If you would like to get in touch or stay connected, please visit us on our Twitter or Instagram at Purpose in Parent. Also, if you're interested and would like to send a personal donation, because this is a labor of love, my cash app is Torah Blessed. T-O-R-A-H-B-L-E-S-S-E-D. 
Thank you again so much for the support, guys, and I really look forward to chatting again next time.